Hello everybody and welcome back to Emily's Upcycle Tome where I take thrifted and salvaged items and make them into cute home decor pieces. Follow me on my Facebook business page where you can catch me live every Friday at my new time at 1pm Pacific Standard Time. Also join me every Wednesday at 9am Pacific Standard Time for live auction sales over on Whatnot. Follow me on other social media apps under Emily's Upcycle Tome. And if you like my content, hit that subscribe button and notification bell for more DIY videos. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Emily's Upcycle Tome. I hope you enjoyed today's project. We are doing a little bit of patchwork with some broken pieces. Coming back in, you guys, with that same green old gallon of Oops paint. So I hope you guys enjoy these thrift flips, most of them might have been from my whatnot purchases because you know i'm still not too mobile here so i can't just hop in my car and go out thrifting so this is a better solution so far and it's working so i'm gonna keep doing this but i really want to get out thrifting it's just something i really enjoy so i'm working towards that goal and once again if you like this content, please hit that notification bell and that subscribe button for more DIY videos. And let's go ahead and hop into the video. So I purchased these two stands off of a whatnot sale. If you notice here where I'm pointing, there is a big old chip from damage from the wood here that is missing. So I decided to go ahead and paint these up since that piece is missing. First of all, I'm cleaning them thoroughly with just some regular rubbing alcohol. And then we're gonna come in with that same green paint that I've been using from that bare gallon of paint that I found in my garage. Trying to still use that up, you guys. For this set of candle holders, I will be coming in with two layers of this soft pale green paint and thoroughly give them a full coverage look. And for the little candlestick in there or that little metal piece that's in place there, you see that where my finger's at, I'm going to remove that due to the fact that the other one does not have it. So I'm going to make them similar matching set and one doesn't have it. So we're going to go ahead and take out that other one. I'm repeating the process here, layering up that first layer of paint with my second candle holder and af off camera i go ahead and do that second coat i'm gonna let these thoroughly dry and we will come in to start camouflaging this piece this chip piece okay you guys i'm just noticing i didn't let these thoroughly dry so we're gonna just go for it here i guess coming in with that Doss paper clay and it is gray because I accidentally bought the stone one But it is still air dry clay and it still works exactly the same as the white one you guys So we're gonna come in working my finger and just forming that paper clay Around the piece here to make it match as much as I can And I like to come in and see what I'm working with with the piece painted so I paint the piece and then kind of still continue shaping that paper clay around making that edge. So here is where we come in to sand it and sanding it smooth as possible, trying to make it um, more uniform with the rest of the piece. I don't know if I quite accomplished that with this product piece here. I might come back later and re-sand it and repaint that part so you see less of it, but for video purposes here, I'm gonna go with this as is. And later on, if I decide to come back and hit that and make it a little bit more prettier for my liking, I will let you guys know in the comments or you guys will see the picture of the final result and decide on your own whether I did okay or whether I did not. So for the rest of the piece, I am coming in with my 220 grit sandpaper and giving this a full scuff down or a sand down. And latex paint usually um, pulls differently and distresses a little bit differently for me and what I noticed. And this one pulled off a little bit too much paint, so I come back and add in a little bit more of that green paint and repeating the process once again for the other candle stand. 
So after I got the look that I want, as far as the distressing is concerned, I come in with some DIY dark wax to age up this piece, add a little bit more variation in the tone, I guess dingy it up a little bit, and of course wipe off the excess. And then this project is complete. Are you guys following me over on whatnot? If you're not, go ahead and click on my link in the description. Give me a follow over on whatnot so you can come join me every Wednesday, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and bid and purchase some of my goodies that I make here on this channel. And once again, that's a live selling platform. You bid on items that I show. You get to see them live. You get to chat. You get to hang out with me, of course. So go ahead and click on that link and join me Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So I have a set of cute little bunnies here that I am going to upcycle. They're just brown little bunnies. If you want to purchase these as is, I did get this at Hobby Lobby. I'm going to come in with that same green oops paint that we've been using this on these last few videos. And I'm going to stipple this on into all the little texture and detailing of our bunny here. Now these are just like a plaster, I guess, or like a faux plastic i don't know what material that is it's just a plastic bunny i guess with a kind of plaster look go ahead and coming in and like i said gonna coat this fully with one layer of this green paint stippling on in all the little grooves all the little little details of the hairs of the bunny and then on my live friday live i asked if i should cover this up with some milk paint and try to give this a chippy look and the answer was yes so after i put this on i'm going to come in with my heat gun try to help this dry a little faster i do have a set of two here so these will be two bunnies and i'm going to do the same exact thing too we are going to come in with some milk paint and see what happens as far as the milk paint is concerned here's where i come in with my heat gun and dry up all this layer of green paint here now i'm coming in with fusions milk paint in the color raw silk that is a one-to-one -one ratio of one scoop of water to one scoop of paint whatever scooper you use you want to just make the exact measurements there and my method here is just to kind of coat the first layer on, come in with my heat gun, let dry that up, and then really come in heavily with the other coats of paint, giving it a very, very textured look and a layered caked on paint look. And if you've used milk paint before, you know that it's very unpredictable. Sometimes it gives you a very heavy chippy look. Sometimes it gives you a crackle. Sometimes it doesn't give you any chippy look, but it does give you a lot of texture. And um, I don't know, I like the caked on texture look. So I like to layer and layer my paint, come in with my heat gun, layer some more and keep that process going now if you want to try milk paint and you haven't tried it for the first time i'll have my affiliate link to these products down in the description so you can go shop these items if you would like to try them now once again like i said i'm coming in heavily with that paint coming back in with my heat gun and this is just the process that i repeat over and over and over again until i get the texture that i want now these bunnies didn't give me very chippy looks they didn't chip very well they do have a little bit of crackle but they didn't chip the way i thought they were going to chip and like i said milk cake paint is very unpredictable it kind of does what it wants to do but we're going to go ahead and work with this and i just like the caked on look that the paint is giving me as i keep layering and using my heat gun to activate a little bit of crackle and to dry up that paint in its place i'm just repeating the steps until i get the look that i want and then to help out distress it a little bit and show some of that undertone of that green paint i'm going to come in with a sandpaper and it's just a 220 grit here that i'm going to come in with and distress and work that paint off the bunny whatever flakes off flakes off there is slight 
flakiness and a little bit of crackle here. But like I said, I'm coming in with this sandpaper to help expose some of that paint and undertones of that green paint that I wanted to show here. I didn't show too much, but you see all this cakey paint look and a little bit of crackling and all that. I'm not sure if I want to come in with some wax here, maybe some gray grunge a little bit. Who knows? But as far as this is concerned, this is where I'm going to stop for now. I'm going to let these thoroughly dry. I will give them a full coverage coat with some top coat and then this project's done. For our next project, I have these two bookends. Now in the center here, they used to have peacocks and one of the heads plopped off. I glued it back on, I put it back in my home and then I lost the head. <laughs> so then these are gonna get a makeover with that same Milk Paint by Fusion and the color Raw Silk. And then eventually they fell and then the rest of the bird fell off. So I went ahead and took off the other one and we're gonna give these cute little book ends an upcycle. And first step here, once again, is to come in with that Milk Paint by Fusion and see how much crackle, how much chipping, how much how much distressing that we get on this piece. Now, once again, coming back in with that same process of layering it on, coming in with my heat gun and layering it on some more, giving it that cake on pink look. Now this piece, when after I already hit it with the first heat gun, I already noticed that it does have a lot of crackle. It does have some chipping. So I'm excited to finish up this piece and see what comes out with it. I'm still deciding what I'm going to put in those rounds. I don't want anything too much. You know, I want the crackle effect and all the chippiness and everything to kind of be the art of this piece. So I might come in. I have two little birds that I found. I might just place them there. I'm not sure if I'm going to put a wood round underneath, but something's, something cute was going to happen here. And we'll see what happens as far as the crackle effect goes and how much texture we get on these pieces here. And to seal in all this work, I'm going to come in with Dixie Belle clear coat and a flat finish. I'm going to cover up all these pieces in this protective layer, covering up the crackle that we just did and the chippy paint that we just did. And after this thoroughly dries, I might come in and do a protective layer of wax just to help seal that in even further. I'll hit the front, the back, and the bottom as well. And then we'll go ahead and start embellishing the piece. And like I said earlier, I want the crackle here and the texture of the paint to be my focal point, but I do want something cute on the base here. So we're gonna go ahead and come in with that cute factor in a minute. And I hope you guys don't get discouraged in trying milk paint. It is a fun paint to play around with and get different textures and different effects that on each of your pieces. You can also mix your color, your powders, and get different colors. Now, for as far as the cuteness factor, I'm coming in just with my hot glue gun and some moss, and I'm going to create a nest at the bottom of this piece. Now, this is going to help cover up where the other bird or the other peacocks were sitting and hit all that bottom and add coverage there as well. And I'm just using my hands here just to form like a pretty nest type with the moss and that glue is going to hold everything into place and you see me just uh, maneuvering the moss here making that little dip now these little birds i got actually from a bird nest i bought off of whatnot and i took it apart somewhat because i'm all about making different pieces with pieces that i have and everybody can go buy a bird nest you guys it's not a big deal but i wanted these birds here and I will do a couple of other things with the actual bird nest and you'll see that in an upcoming video. But I am once again going to just secure these on with some hot glue and putting large beads here in the center of the body of the bird and adding a little bit more hot glue on the tail so it holds to the base of the piece. 
Now the moss is glued under there, so all of that should be glued to one another, repeating the layering, one layered glue to the next layer, and the next layer glue to the next layer. So this should be secure enough to hold it. I'm just going to leave them as is after I add these birds in. You guys let me know what you guys think of these pieces and would you use them in your home and how would you style these pieces up and here are the finished projects So, first of all, thank you for sticking around and watching the video. What did you guys think of the projects here that we created using this oops paint that's on this wall here? Because <laughs> everything is getting this green paint. But um, let me know which was your favorite. Did you pick up any tools or processes here that I've done to put in your own tool bag and use them on your own crafts? Um, if you are not following me over on my Facebook page, go ahead and click on that description down below. Also, I go live over there every Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and you can watch me live doing these crafts and creating pieces. Interact with me. Let me know which, which products to use. What should I do with the pieces? I like a very interactive kind of live and we kind of create together. So go ahead and follow my Facebook page and join me there. Um, once again, you guys, I thank everybody for watching and I appreciate your comments. So go ahead and leave those down in the down below as well. And I will see you guys all on the next one. I hope you guys have an amazing day and bye for now.